Welcome to the screencast for Advanced Bar Model Drawing for Part Whole Word Problems. If you are new to model drawing, I recommend you first view the basic model drawing videos which can be accessed on the same website where you found this video, at this web address. The videos can be found in the grade level folders for 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th grade. You can find even more advanced bar model problems in the Bar Model Problems folder. Here is the first problem we will solve. Danica bought some nail polish for $51. This was three-fifths of her money. How much money did she have to begin with? Since we need to find out how much money Danica had to begin with, our sentence statement can be, Danica had blank dollars to begin with. When rereading the problem, we identify the important information we need to solve the problem. The hole for this problem is the money Danica had to begin with. So this unibar will represent Danica's money. We'll subdivide it into five pieces because we're told that the $51 she spent was three-fifths of her money. We can put our question mark at the end of the bar since we are asked to find out the amount of money Danica began with. Looking at our model, if three units equals $51, then one unit equals $51 divided by three, which is $17. So each of these pieces is $17. That means that 5 units, our whole, will be equal to $17 times 5, which is $85. Danica had $85 to begin with. Here's another simple part whole problem. Henry baked 520 cookies for the math competition. If 3 fourths were eaten, how many did he have left over? Since we need to find out how many cookies Henry had left over, our sentence statement can be, Henry had blank cookies left over. When rereading the problem, we identify the important information we need to solve the problem. The hole for this problem is the 520 cookies Henry baked, so this unit bar will represent those cookies. It's subdivided into four pieces because we're told that three-fourths of the cookies were eaten. We can put our question mark in the last piece because it represents the cookies which are left over. Looking at our model, if 4 units equals 520, then 1 unit equals 520 divided by 4, which is 130. So each of these pieces is 130 cookies. Henry had 130 cookies left over. I'd like you to try this part whole problem on your own. Pause the video while you solve it. When you're ready to check your answer, start the video again. Did you remember to write a sentence statement? It takes some practice to remember to do it first. Did you identify the important information? Does your model look similar to mine? Did you follow the same process, or did you approach it another way? Did you find that Betsy made 112 cupcakes? Here's a more complicated problem. It reads, Fran sold 108 chocolate chip and snickerdoodle cookies at her lemonade stand. If she made 36 snickerdoodle cookies, how many chocolate chip cookies did she make? How much money did she earn selling the chocolate chip cookies if she sold them in bags of six for $1.25 and she sold all of the bags? Since we need to find out how many chocolate chip cookies she made and how much money she earned, our sentence statement can be, Fran made blank chocolate chip cookies and she earned blank dollars selling them. When rereading the problem, we identify the important information we need to solve the problem. Since we know this is a part whole problem and our whole is 108 cookies, we can start with a unit bar divided into small, a smaller piece for the 36 snickerdoodles and a larger piece for the remaining chocolate chip cookies. We need to find out how many chocolate chip cookies this larger piece represents, so let's do that computation over on the side. 108 minus 36 equals 72 chocolate chip cookies. The next step is to find out how many bags of chocolate chip cookies Fran sold. We can drop down and make a unit bar to represent the bags of chocolate chip cookies. We need to find out how many times we can divide 6 cookies, the total number of cookies in each bag, into our total of 72 cookies to be able to find out how much money was earned from selling chocolate chip cookies. Let's work the computation on the side. 72 divided by 6 equals 12 bags of cookies. The last step is to multiply 12 bags of cookies by $1.25 per bag to find that $15 was earned. Fran made 72 chocolate chip cookies and earned $15 selling them. 
Here's another part whole problem. Two pounds of nectarines and one pound of bananas cost $3.15. Two pounds of nectarines and three pounds of bananas cost $5.65. Find the cost of one pound of bananas. Since we need to find out how much one pound of bananas will cost, our problem statement can be one pound of bananas costs blank dollars. When rereading the problem, we identify the important information we need to solve the problem. We should start our model drawing with what we know. We are first told that two pounds of nectarines and one pound of bananas cost $3.15. So this is what that can look like. Next, we are told that two pounds of nectarines and three pounds of bananas cost $5.65. So we can drop down and show that underneath our first unit bar. Compare the two bars. What do you see? Do you see that the only difference between the two bars is that the second model has two more pounds of bananas? That looks like a pretty obvious place to start our computation, doesn't it? First, we need to find out the difference in cost between the two bars so we can subtract $3.15 from $5.65 to find the difference as $2.50. Since two pounds of bananas is $2.50, then one pound of bananas should cost $2.50 divided by two, which is $1.25. One pound of bananas costs $1.25. Here's another problem that's similar to the last one. This time, try modeling and solving it on your own. Pause the video to work the problem, then start the video to compare your solution to mine. Did you start your model like this? Or does yours look different? Do you have a second model, something like this? Did you find the difference in costs between the two models? Did you find that one racket costs $70? Here's our last part whole problem. Carter raised money for a walkathon. On Monday, he earned 75 cents a lap. On Tuesday, he earned 80 cents a lap. And on Wednesday, he earned 95 cents a lap. If he walked 36 laps on Monday, 50% as many laps on Tuesday as on Monday, and twice as many laps on Wednesday as on Monday, how much money did Carter earn for the walkathon? Since we need to find out how much money Carter earned for the walkathon, our problem statement can be Carter earned blank dollars for the walkathon. When rereading the problem, we identify the important information we need to solve the problem. We should start our model drawing with what we know. All students will not necessarily choose to draw their models alike, and that's okay. What's important is that the model makes sense to the person who is drawing it. In reading the problem, I decided to first draw bars representing laps for each day. We are told that Carter walked 36 laps on Monday, 50% as many laps on Tuesday, which would be 18 laps, and twice as many laps on Wednesday, which would be 72 laps. Now that the laps are represented, I can go back in and write how much Carter earns for each lap. Since we have to find the total earned, we can bracket the total and write our question mark. At this point, we can go ahead and calculate how much Carter earned each day. On Monday, he earned 75 cents a lap times 36 laps, which equals $27. On Tuesday, he earned 80 cents a lap times 18 laps, which equals $14.40. On Wednesday, he earned 95 cents a lap times 72 laps, which equals $68.40. The final step is to add each day's totals, $27 plus $14.40 plus $68.40 equals $109.80. Carter earned $109.80 for the walkathon. This concludes the screencast on part whole word problem. I hope you will take the time to explore other Singapore math videos. Singapore math is just plain good math.